Hello and good day! It's time to meet our next team playing at VCT Ascension Pacific 2024. And this time it's going to be none other than the opponents of JFT Esports, Rapid Lo-Fi, representing Vietnam. There's an underlying story here for both Oceania and Vietnam in that these two regions came in as underdogs last year at Ascension and both created a splash by making it into the top 6 playoffs bracket. Funnily enough, both regions are also sending a different representative this year. Fancy United Esports was the Vietnam reps last year, showcasing some funky comps and, to be honest, they definitely captured my heart for sure. Yet this year, they just could not close out the playoff bracket in either stage, and eventually it was Rapid Lo-Fi who would be rising to the occasion in Stage 2. Let's meet our players. Now, this team also did have a roster change in the middle of the year, but for now, the starting five that wrapped up the Grand Finals and got them into Ascension are going to be Daft, Suka, Prodigy, Tripsiu, and Albus, or Albus Zen. For the most part, uh, I would say that their roles are fairly straightforward, although there is a bit of an anomaly when it comes to Prodigy. But before we talk about that, a Daft is mainly going to be your primary duelist. You're seeing the Gecko there because they were playing a lot of non-duelist or no-duelist compositions on Icebox. We'll have to wait to see if that uh, continues at Ascension. Meanwhile, Suka is going to be, of course, your primary initiator. Uh, I mean, just tried and true initiator right here for Suka. Uh, Prodigy, we'll come back to that one. Tripsiu is going to be your main controller, and Albus is going to be mainly your Sentinel. Now, uh, some of these maps, like for instance on Haven, they haven't quite really decided how they want to do that. And Lotus, they only played it twice, and they changed their comp uh, both times. So there's still a little bit of flux. And when it comes to Prodigy, it does seem like there is a mix of they want to try some new things that you know that maybe favor the team but also maybe there's a little bit of a comfort thing going on here for prodigy uh, because i know that he was playing a, a lot of the kind of secondary duelists prior to that on his previous team of nctdk so I'm curious to see uh, if we're going to see maybe any more expansions in the Asian pool. But for the most part, we'll just say that Prodigy is the flex, right? Is it going to be double controller? He's going to be in that brimstone. Uh, do you need something else to kind of help fill in the gaps? He's going to be playing that Sage. It's kind of like a Paper Rex situation with Jing where, okay, we need something else here on Ascent. Uh, and Prodigy is going to be playing the Sage, even though they also still play something like the Cypher or the Killjoy. Uh, so... I, you know, I'm not going to read too much into it and say like, oh, well, maybe there, you know, Prodigy really needs to brush up on the Asian pools. I mean, just knowing what Fancy was doing last year, this could just be the meta in Vietnam where they're trying some funky things. Also, seeing how they play, I, I'm not too surprised in some of the agents that they pick. Uh, but obviously, it's going to be hard to convince the rest of the world that this works uh, because, you know, there, there's a reason that not a lot of teams are pulling things like this uh, into their matches. So I am curious if we're going to see Rapid Lo-Fi confident enough in their own individual capabilities to say that, hey, we can get by and we can just kind of pick these agents that just allow us to frag out a bit more and see how far that goes. So let's talk about the journey that Rapid Lo-Fi took so far this year. Uh, Rapid Lo-Fi seems to be a team that never quite broke into the top discussion until 2024. And when I say top, like a top team of any region, I mean a team that is, you know, considered to be a rival or a rising rival to be the representative of that region, right? Like top one, top two, or at least climbing into there, like always having a shot at going to the grand final, something like that. Even as individuals, nobody on this team really had a standout title or record other than Suka, who had some good stints on other teams, including Fancy United in the past. Now in split one with a slightly different roster, RLF faces favorites Fancy United off the bat, takes a loss, and has to climb back up the Swiss bracket. Fate was not kind to them as they had to face Fancy United again in the semifinals of the playoffs, going right into the bracket, being knocked down to the lowers, where they did make a run but eventually lost out to Team Flash in the lower finals best of five. Still, third place, Team Flash eventually actually wins split one. Not bad, not bad. In comes split two. Rapid Lo-Fi rebuilds around Daft and Suka and are now looking to make progress when, bam, they face Fancy United again in the first round of the Swiss bracket. In fact, let's just pause right here real quick. Rapid Lo-Fi as a brand, as a team, has faced Fancy United six times before the grand finals of Split 2. And you guessed it, they've never won that matchup. 
They were 0-6 against Fantasy United until this very last time that they faced off against each other in the Grand Finals. So the overall story kind of starts to feel a little similar for RLF. They climb back out of the Swiss stage. Uh, and then this time, thankfully, they don't run into Fantasy United right away. And they're able to get some revenge against Team Flash in the first round, the upper semifinals of the playoffs bracket. But again, after that, it's Fantasy United waiting for them once more. And they get knocked down again into the lower finals. This time, though... Rapid Lo-Fi comes prepared, and they play a nail-biter best of five all the way down to map five to be able to get revenge once more against Team Flash, flipping the script and putting themselves into a rematch against Fantasy United. And if Team Flash could make the upset happen in split one, RLF was not about to let this chance go away. And so Rapid Lo-Fi wins 3-1, the first match ever to win against Fantasy United Esports, and it's the one that matters to get into Ascension. Taking a look at this grand final, I think there are some obvious players to watch. Now, number-wise, obviously, Suka and Daft both stand out. Plus 30 for Suka, plus 20 for Daft. I mean, those are some big numbers to be putting up across these four maps. Uh, but for me, I'm going to pick Suka, of course, as one of the players to watch out for, just given the pedigree that he has to carry this team, to lead this team, and also the numbers he was putting up in the grand finals. But also, I'm going to point out Albus. Now... I know that he's on the other side of the scoreboard, but we'll get to him in a second. Let's talk about Suka first. I mean, what more is there to say, to be honest, right? He's plus 30 in the grand finals in a best of five, four maps, has 21 multi kills in that match, including an ace and two 4Ks. So that's that already accounts for a lot of those kills. And this guy was positive against every member of Fancy United in their head-to-head -head matchups. I mean, this is the center of this team. And among all of these frags that he's putting up, he still had the most assists in the entire match as the initiator for Rapid Lo-Fi. I mean, he's doing everything. He's doing everything for this team. He has the most experience on this team. Obviously, he's been on teams like Fancy United in the past. Uh, you know, being able to kind of be in the forefront, in the spotlight, uh, has the history, has the pedigree, and he's here to try to lead the team as the center, as the foundation. Now, on the other side, Albus's numbers don't look very good, right? I mean, we'll just say it like it is. I mean, in fact, in the four maps of the Grand Finals, he has a lower than 70% KAST, right? Kills, assists, survives, trades, uh, and is quite negative in his KD ratio as well. But let it also be known that his first kill to first death ratio was positive. And in fact, he didn't give up a single first death in two of those four maps. To me, what that tells me as someone who's playing that Sentinel role is that whenever he was given that chance, right? Like the opponents are maybe coming to his site or something like that, he wasn't going down without a fight. There's also a few rounds where Albus's impact kills were the make or break play for that round, right? If Albus gets that kill or gets the two kills, then they win the round. If not, then it's over. Like, it, there's just possibly no way that this team is able to climb back out of that scenario. So to me, this is a player to watch because if he can just get a bit more consistent, those impact rounds are really going to start to sing. I also want to take that chance to talk briefly about the team's style overall, because I think this might also impact a little bit of Albus's performance. Out of the teams we've covered so far, Rapid Lo-Fi is by far the most haphazard team we've seen. There's actually a number of okay setups at like the start of rounds or round to round adjustments that tell me that they understand how each map is meant to be played or what the theory is behind them, what's the important parts of the map, uh, and also that they understand uh, some okay macro strategy. But the moment a fight breaks out, it's just like moths to a flame and the entire team will just start to barrel towards the action. This is going to impact someone like a Sentinel who is usually meant to be the anchor, especially on defense. This style isn't going to cut it at Ascension. It used to be passable, I would say maybe even last year, as long as you were pretty cracked individually. But in 2024, given how much every region has improved, people will just start to bait you in, wait it out, and trap you into this negative cycle of losing firefights. I'm not quite sure Rapid Lo-Fi has the experience to calm things down in the you know just over a month that they've had coming into Ascension, 
But maybe, maybe that's on Suka, right? As the veteran to really reel things back in for the entire team. Taking a look at the maps, funny enough, I just said that like this is a team that barrels towards the action and, and you would imagine that that maybe favors certain maps, but uh, actually Ascent is their best performing map so far. The most traditional map that's been around for a long time and everyone knows how to play defaults and uh, play different setups on that map. So uh, that is going to be their highest performing, but it's also one of the maps that they consistently banned out against what you would expect to be stronger teams in the matchup. Sunset and then Ascent were kind of their priority bans, and then they would bounce around some other ones if their opponents maybe banned out something like the Sunset. So we'll just say it again. I mean, this map pool is weak too. I mean, first of all, the numbers aren't great, uh, but then you're like shying away from two maps as much as you can, uh, and then you haven't played, you know, still a couple more as well, including Abyss. I mean, this is going to be a tough draft if they have not added on more to their map pool. And again, I I mean, it's not like this isn't a region that ended in the early days of July, where now you've had two months to prepare. It's just over a month, which is okay, right? You've had some time, but also given that, you know, this team plays a little scrappy and things like that, I'm not quite sure. And then you look at the comps, and okay, there are certain maps where they're just switching comps nonstop, right? And they're playing some funky things. They're bringing the Phoenix out on the Haven, right? They're still sticking with the No Duelist and Icebox. They're going for the Double Controller, which isn't as funky now that we've seen a lot of different teams kind of try variations of it but over on the lotus right they're utilizing the clove uh, I mean, they're playing Sage, right, on some of these maps, on Ascent, on top, as a second Sentinel. So that tells me a little bit of like, okay, you're not quite sure what else to do with your composition. Obviously, we've seen Cypher Lock as a combo now. So yeah, I guess the Sage takes the place of the Deadlock. Uh, but there's a whole separate discussion to be had there. So I'm just seeing that it's pretty scrappy, right? Uh, and... Yes, Fancy United surprised us last year with their own scrappy style and their scrappy comps, but it's hard to have a lot of faith that Rapid Lo-Fi will have similar or better success this year when everyone else has leveled up so much. So that's Rapid Lo-Fi. Uh, I mean, first of all, I love the name. And because of how much I was interested in Fancy United last year and the way they were playing the comps they were pulling out, I'm interested to see if this team can also convince me that their compositions have legs because I'm I'm one of those people that are very open to different compositions. It might be a bit all in, it might be a bit cheesy, but as long as there's logic, I'm down for it. I'd love to see it. So we'll see what Rapid Lo-Fi has prepared, but I gotta say, it's hard to put them even in the Dark Horse tier, and I think they're straight going into the Underdog tier. And... I would hope that that's not the result, just because, again, last year, Fancy United gets into top six. Uh, and then you have Crazy Guy able to win out Ascension and become the first Vietnam representative, the Vietnamese representative in VCT Pacific, right? Obviously, had a little bit of a time on the bench, but he was back as the IGL and Bleed Esports. Like, things were starting to look up ever so slightly for Vietnamese Valorant. And I would love for them to kind of be able to continue that momentum. So, I want to see Rapid Lo-Fi leave a mark at Ascension 2024, but for now, it looks like it's going to be an uphill battle. That's it for our representatives from Vietnam, Rapid Lo-Fi. Let me know down in the comments below if you're excited to see a bit of an underdog story come to life. Or maybe you've been following the Vietnamese scene and you'd like to add on a little bit more about some of your favorite players and teams. In the meantime, of course, we'll be moving on in this series to the other side of the bracket where we will cover Naus and Boom Esports. A lot of familiar faces on those two teams. And then last but not least, we will, of course, cover the last two teams, the uh, like top seeds of last year's Ascension, right? The regions of Japan and Singapore and this year it's going to be Riddle Order and Disguised being those representatives so those will be the last teams that we cover as an intro going into Ascension and don't forget we will be doing a pick and video as well alongside a tier list so after we've kind of covered everything you'll get a quick overview on what I'm expecting coming into Ascension also just got this notice just a little bit ago in my email, but we will be watch partying. So most days, some of the days I have to work on the Korean broadcast, but we will be watch partying. So make sure you subscribe to the channel right here or follow me on Twitch. The links are down below in the description to catch the matches live alongside me and see which teams are rising up to ascend into VCT Pacific. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.